Um, we had a really nice evening last night at the research club. Um, those of you who were there would have enjoyed it, and I believe some of you went on to uh, have a few drinks until 2.30, and then there are a few others that went on until 6.30, and I'm very impressed to see uh, one or two of the 6.30 people here, so uh, hopefully uh, your concentration caps are on. Those of you who are smiling probably know who I'm talking about. Um, just make sure I've got the technology working. This is a tough slot, uh, late in the afternoon, and a fairly serious subject. Um, we look at the comparison between PCs, which uh, was uh, the traditional online methodology, and smartphones. And I see that um, we've got some opportunities now with presentations earlier today uh, to look at feature phones too, but this study was done in late 2011. Um, we had smartphones as the new technology, and we had a lot of myths and a lot of information that was missing in the space. So um, we did a parallel test, which we uh, conducted across six countries, uh, Japan, Korea, China, Australia, the UK, and the USA. Uh, we'd like to thank our partners on the study, uh, Confirmit, who organized to arrange for the international comparisons, um, AIP, who did the field work in the Asian countries, and Research Now, who did the field work in the USA and the UK, and QRR, which did the field work in Australia. I don't have to say this to the people in this audience, but it was in the uh, presentation, so I will still uh, present it. You, we all know that smartphones are experiencing rapid growth across the region, particularly in the developing markets and amongst the younger demographic segments. And usage is starting to approach and even match and surpass PC usage. The phone is becoming a central platform for connecting our daily lives. The research community um, is interested in understanding the representativeness of the data that we collect via a smartphone and if the quality of the smartphone research data can be high, we envisage more and more data collection will be sought via this technology. We present the findings on many key issues in which marketing research literature is largely silent. These include uh, issues like sampling, stratification, design, weighting, and when smartphone data collection may be used as either a replacement survey methodology or as a supplementary data collection method. This led us to the following hypotheses. So we have, we developed three hypotheses. One, that surveys conducted on smartphones can produce the same results as those conducted on PCs. Two, that long surveys can be conducted successfully on smartphones, and that was one of the biggest issues we wanted to test. And thirdly, that surveys on a PC can be successfully scaled down to a smartphone uh, with its smaller screen size. And we use the Confirmit uh, right sizing uh, formatted uh, software to enable us to do that. So it recognized the browser and it changed according to whether we were dealing with a smartphone or a PC. Our survey design, um, we carried out, and I know this is blasphemy, a 15 minute survey on smartphones. And I know that. We've had a couple of people saying that five to 10 minutes is probably what you're looking at. And I think that was on the basis that that was the recruitment phase on a three-stage process we saw a paper yesterday. We had three sample cells. Uh, we had smartphones doing, smartphone people doing the survey on a smartphone. Uh, we just did smartphone people doing the survey on a PC. So we could actually see the difference between the two platforms from the same type of people and we had the general population who were doing their surveys on a PC, which represents the traditional, at the time, methodology for online. We also um, thought we would do um, an assessment two ways. One was we looked at whether or not people were happy doing it and whether or not they would do the survey again. But more importantly, we also wanted to see whether the data that we collected using the two different methods or two different platforms was actually comparable. 
uh, we wanted to be able to transition or know that we could transition to a smartphone and not lose quality on the data. So we covered multiple categories. We looked at mobile phone providers, financial institutions, and insurance providers. And we rotated those categories so that we had um, a third of the interviews doing it in first position for, say, banks, in second position for banks, and in third position. So we were then able to look at whether um, the information we collected on bank was the same whether it was done in the first five minutes, the second five minutes, or the third five minutes. In addition to the three categories, um, we included questions to assess things like key performance measures, like penetration, satisfaction, recommendation, uh, possible waiting needs, uh, demographics. We waited by the type of phone, we waited by the brand of phone. You know, is an iPhone different or an iPhone user different from a an Android user, we, did, we looked at their attitudes to technology and looked at what impact that might, might have on the categories that we covered. And we looked at their overall experience, their enjoyment, and their likeliness to complete a similar survey again. Within the survey, various types of questions were asked in order to assess the transferability to the smart, smartphone screen of things like single selection, multi-selection, drop-down boxes, grids, open-ended, and rating scales. As I said, fieldwork was carried out late in November uh, 2011, and we've uh, I analyzed the data previously, particularly for Australia, but the opportunity to have a look at the Asian data um, was obvious when we saw this MRMW Asia conference, and so we've re-looked at it, and the focus today will be on the Asian data, particularly in comparison with the West as well. Um, respondents were sourced from partner panels, and in, a, in all of them, an invitation was sent by email. Um, in Australia, we sent uh, SMSs to our smartphone panel and email to the ordinary panel. Uh, there were some limitations in the smartphone sample. In Japan, uh, it required to use special smartphone-only email addresses. Uh, the U.S. smartphone panel sample was limited to those who were not restricted to survey app use only. The incentives were the same for all three Asian countries. We gave them 10 e-points, redeemable against cash or cash vouchers or a gift. In all Western countries, cash incentives were provided. In the U.K., it was one pound. In the U.S., it was two dollars. And in Australia, we had to differ it by mode. We offered $3 for a PC and $4 for a smartphone. As part of the survey software platform, the mobile operating system was recorded. Uh, respondents were also asked about the type of phone and mobile service provider. The participants who completed the survey on their smartphone did so using the confirmed software platform, which optimizes survey layout. And by optimizing the survey to fit the screen of the participants, the participants are able to take full advantage of their respective smartphone features and interactive capabilities. And here are a couple of screenshots of the survey on the two uh, different platforms, smartphone versus PC. The overall average question layer length I mentioned on smartphones is 15 minutes. Um, although there are many ways to gauge whether the length of a questionnaire is a problem, we thought by asking respondents if they enjoyed completing it and whether they would be likely to do it again would be a good way of examining questionnaire length as well. We tested the results to see if we obtained the same results using smartphones. So in each of these uh, tables, you'll see that uh, the first column is those people who did smartphone on smartphone. The second column is those who did smartphone on their PCs. And the third column is the traditional PC panel. So we've got differences, obviously, by Japan, Korea, and China uh, in terms of enjoyed filling it out. And uh, the top two boxes, however, was fairly strong across all of them. The results were also fairly similar between the Asian and the Western countries. Similarly, likeliness, likeliness to do it again and was consistent across all three modes in each country, and even in countries where we had level of enjoyment being moderate, such as Japan, Korea, and the USA, likeliness, likeliness to do it again was strong. 
In order to examine wear out and the questionnaire length, the three categories were rotated and analyzed by position in the questionnaire, each reflecting approximately five minutes of the survey. The overall dropout levels of PC and smartphone were favorably com comparable, 21% uh, and 22%. The highest percentage of dropouts was at the beginning of the survey, particularly amongst the PC respondents. Indeed, the data suggests that interest in participation was higher for smartphone respondents than for PC respondents, with only 8% dropping out at the first question compared to 19% on the PC. This finding is consistent with generally positive comments that we also received in the open-enders amongst the smartphone respondents about participation, suggesting a desire among smartphone users to complete a survey in this format. Following the third category section, dropouts for smartphones, however, increased above the dropouts for PC. So on viability, high enjoyability and likeliness to do it again combined with average dropout rates dispel the myth that long surveys cannot be completed on a smartphone. A 15-minute survey on a smartphone can be as viable as a five-minute survey, and this may be because content and design of a questionnaire are bigger drivers of enjoyment and likeliness than length of survey. So uh, the caution is you have to think about the content and the type of subject and obviously the incentive uh, to get people to do the longer survey. We carried out extensive statistical analysis to assess differences in the quality of the data obtained uh, by the different platforms. Uh, we did ANOVA, ANOVA plots, correspondence analysis, multinomial logic models, text mining, and text analytics. And I'm not going to go into detail now, but um, I believe you'll all be getting copies of the presentations at a later stage from the organizers of the conference. We had a lot of charts on this, and I was told that at this time of the afternoon, it's probably not a good idea to go through them all. So I've summarized them, uh, and what you're seeing here is a summary of a comparison between the different uh, platforms and whether or not there was any significant difference. So tick is that there's no significant difference between smartphone and PC, and across means that there was a significant difference uh, for one or more brands. We looked at satisfaction, the top uh, grid, and recommendation across the category for mobiles, banks, and for insurance companies. And the dependent variable is the data collection mode, uh, whether it was smartphone or smartphone, smartphone on PC or PC. The in independent variables are satisfaction with the brand and likelihood to recommend the brand to family and friends. Generally, the measures are comparable across modes within each country and particularly in Japan. The impact of data collection method is statistically insignificant. One or two individual brands do differ and brand usage also differs in some cases indicating that there may be a need to calibrate at a brand level and you need to test that. However, overall the impact of data collection method for measuring satisfaction and recommendation is insignificant. We also tested rotating the order of the presentation of each category and comparing the results of the first, the second, and the third time rotation. And we found that whichever position the data was collected in, whether it was in the first five minutes, the second five minutes, or the third five minutes, there was no significant difference between the data that we collected. So that is, that is good. Um, our conclusions, bias resulting from the platform used is negligible. Results across the time, the interval, and mode are statistically identical. And overall, the results support that a move from PC to smartphone would provide consistent results if you're using consistent software across both. To further examine any potential biases between smartphones and PC users, we looked at a series of attitude questions. We looked at important factors in the mobile phone category, we looked at adjectives associated with financial institutions, and we looked at attitudes towards technology. Uh, I've taken just one here, which is I have a personal interest in IT. There's a whole set of at attitudes. Uh, as a good example of the differences, in Japan and Korea, smartphone respondents are more engaged with technology. In China, interest in technology is high and is comparable across all three cells. Only on the topic of social media privacy issues do we see higher concern amongst PC respondents. In the case where the survey being conducted may be impacted by the adoption of technology, we recommend waiting by these factors. 
Overall, there was no evidence that these differences impacted the satisfaction or recommendation results for all three categories we measured. Differences in age and gender across platforms were found to be statistically significant across all six countries. Uh, the smartphone or smartphone people, as we saw in an earlier presentation yesterday, are younger. Gender differences varied by country, and we found that by weighting by age and gender, Aligned to the, that aligned the sample to the population. We found that the length of questionnaire across modes examined by enjoyment and likeliness to do it again and wear out at five minute intervals did not produce different results. The questionnaire included a variety of question types. We concluded that all question types transferred successfully to the smaller screen. When we examined the outputs of satisfaction and recommendation questions by all three categories, the results were not statistically different, and this was the same with the attitude questions. The weighting necessary to align the different modes to the population was adequately addressed by simply weighting by age and gender. Um, I, I think I can rush through this. Uh, we all know the benefits of smartphone research. Smartphones are linked to the person independent of location, uh, such as a home or work PC. The convenience for respondents to interest uh, to interact with the survey instrument is good. Real-time results that are closer to real in situ behavior. We found response time of day linked closely with the time of the broadcast. The accessing of younger and oftentimes hard to reach demographics is better on the smartphones. The rising penetration of smartphones which translates to rising data collection reach. The smartphone is becoming a centralized communication and social medium that spans telecommunications, email, internet, shopping and surveys. The cost effectiveness awarded by afforded by a fast and non-invasive immediately accessible medium is a plus and smartphone features open up more research opportunities such as GP location tracking, photos, video recording, audio recording and scanning. We've seen some terrific examples of that during the conference. Limitations may include any surveys that rely on a need for larger screens or larger panel sizes. Note also that the average length of interview tends to run longer on the smartphone than on the PC. So if this needs to be taken into consideration in survey design, we averaged about 15 minutes on the smartphones, but only nine minutes on the PC. So there is um, a, a difficulty with um, doing it. You should be testing it on the smartphone for length rather than the PC for length. While overall results between the two platforms showed consistency, a couple of questions on satisfaction and recommendation differed by one or two individual brands. So we need to check the need to calibrate at a brand level before changing platforms in any particular category. We conclude that smartphone research is a viable option to get a valid data. No additional wear out is apparent after 15 minutes and dropout rates for PC and smartphones are the same. Software platforms such as Confirmant, which optimize a survey layout to fit the screen, allow for an equally positive experience and provide for consistent results and myths of limitations may be based on past software limitations. Smartphones can access difficult to reach younger age groups far more easily and quickly. Uh, enjoyability is high and consistent across the platforms and the intention to conduct similar surveys is high. The quality of the data achieved is the same at 5, 10 and 15 minutes and as a result our three hypotheses were all supported. We can get the same results uh, on a smartphone we can conduct longer surveys on a smartphone, and we can scale down our questionnaire to a smartphone smaller screen. We believe that the marketing research in industry can confidently migrate from a PC to smartphones when accounting for small adjustments, such as waiting for representativeness of age and gender. We propose the generalizability of our findings indicates that moving from PC to smartphones will not pose representative problems across markets. So we did cover uh, the West and the Asian countries and felt that we got consistent results across all of the countries. Thank you for your time today. And on the chart with the ticks and the crosses, three of the four places where there were significant differences were where you were researching mobiles. Is there a, um, a risk or a potential, do you think, of a specific bias coming in when the topic of research is mobile and we're comparing data from PC to mobile. I'm not, I'm not saying that one is right and the other is, is wrong, but that there could well be a difference in those cases. 
if you're doing something on IT, you probably should need to be careful. I uh, should have said, if you're doing something on mobiles, you probably should be equally careful. And you, you're right, there were three of the crosses uh, on the mobile questions. Uh, there were none on banks or insurance. Yeah. Thank you for picking that up. I noticed that uh, the, the pattern of results for attitudes to technology were more positive in China versus Korea and Japan. And similarly, the attitudes, um, the, the dependent variables of uh, willingness to do the exercise again and satisfaction were more positive towards smartphone, by smartphone people in Korea and Japan and generally positive across China for all three platforms. And thinking about that, one way of understanding that pattern of results would be to say that uh, the, the more positive attitudes to the smartphone reflect a kind of, this is a novel platform, therefore I'm happy to do anything. Where, and you see that across the board in China, where all of those technologies tend to be more novel or newer. So in other words, I suppose the bottom line question is, uh, is what we're seeing a kind of historical effect? Come back five years from now, and we'd see a, a, a degradation in that um, positive attitude to surveys on smartphones. We saw at the beginning of the survey a much larger dropout, 19% on PCs than on smartphones. And uh, one of our um, hypotheses was that uh, people were interested in engaging with a smartphone because at the end of 2011, it was going to be a unique novel experience. Uh, I would think that if we were to do it again today, we might find, particularly from people who've done multiple surveys on a mobile or a smartphone, that uh, then we may get a similar dropout uh, to PCs at the beginning rather than uh, going all the way through to the, to the end. Um, so at the same time, uh, we've seen some cultures where technology um, has been leapfrogged and people um, uh, are really using the latest technology across um, all, all platforms. And uh, so there are some similarities. And so that's a, your point that in China, um, both of them are novel and uh, you know, so you're getting a high level of interest. On the chart where you have the ticks and the crosses, um, I noticed that the significant differences are actually seen in, Kore in Korea and in China, but not in Japan. Um, do you have any, any insight as to why um, this happened? If you give me a card, I'll have a look and I'll come back to you. Is there any difference between age groups even and gender, males and females? This is number one. Number two, maybe I didn't get you correctly. Uh, but I want to clarify something. Uh, did you send the questionnaire over the, uh, the smartphone or the mobile and uh, uh, sure. the long questionnaire and they replied back to you or you are just asking them whether they will answer such a long questionnaire and they answer yes or no? Your first question on uh, differences by gender and age, yes, there were significant differences and we had to wait for that. So, um, in, and those differences differed by culture, by country, and um, you know, there's quite a lot of information. There's probably a couple of PhDs in there somewhere, but uh, definitely uh, th there are differences and you have to wait for it. And if you want to look at it by individual country, then again, I'm happy to have a look at it. In terms of your second question, we sent uh, people who were on smartphones uh, text invitations so that they could click on it as opposed to uh, sending them an email where we're not sure whether they were going to respond on their PC or their smartphone. Um, the, our conclusions were drawn from people having gone through the whole process rather than asking them whether they would, were happy or would uh, do the survey again. So all of the information was, was based on people who had gone through the whole questionnaire. So when you were designing out this piece of research, and you, ex you compared the five minutes for the 15 minutes, did you think about trying to compare any other different time lengths? So, one of a 20 minute questionnaire. Um, to, to what, what made you settle on 15 minutes? Um, the, the, the length of the questionnaire was independent of the design. Uh, it, as it turned out, we, we thought we had to cover three different categories because the information we collected in one category may be different if we were to do it in another category. So we, just, we chose three different categories. It then uh, became quite easy to separate them out and say, well, we'll use the same questions across three categories. Uh, so the issue then is, with, as a researcher, you think about 
uh, rotation. So if you've got rotation, you may as well collect information on that rotation. So you had uh, banks in the first position, in second position, in third position, and at the same time, the design included uh, each of the other categories in first, second, and third. Um, we didn't want to kill uh, our opportunity to test this because for, for us at that stage, 15 minutes was way out of the park in terms of the hypothesis that you couldn't do a survey of more than five minutes on the smartphone. So we, when we did 15 minutes, we expected huge dropout. So our dropout levels, which we collected, were important in that process. Uh, more important was we expected wear out. We thought people would be totally pissed off by the time they got to the third category and that uh, we would be getting straight lining, lack of quality, and inconsistent data. And we were thrilled that we were getting the same quality of data in the third five minutes as we were in the first. Um, if anyone wants to support a study, because this was a, we did over 9,000 interviews across six countries, to do 20 minutes, happy to take your money. Our first experiment was with five minute chunks and we found that most people did all the chunks in one go, so it was equivalent of doing a 15 minute uh, s survey. Uh, but I think you're right that once you start getting over that and you start getting to 20 minutes or 25 minutes, then that's where you're, you're, you're just pushing the bounds, really. Um, but, um, but it does seem to be very much about context and subject matter. Well, I've spoken uh, to a lot of people, uh, even at this conference, and some of them are doing 20-minute-plus questionnaires, uh, and it depends on two things. One is the subject, um, some health questionnaires where people actually have an interest in what you're talking about, uh, and uh, the second is incentives. Uh, for $50, you can get a one-hour survey done by almost everybody.